Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Well, how come you're taking a later train today, David? Oh, are you trying to get rid of me? No, of course not. But how come you're taking a later train? Pass the cream, please. Oh, here you are, dear. It's got toast in it. You know, I think you're just doing this to irritate me. What, taking a later train? No. I thought you'd be pleased. He's telling me why. Because I want to spend five more minutes with you, my love. That's why. Well, I wish that were the truth. I know better. You don't only one year. Yes, you do. I'm skeptical, all Barry? right. Very, very. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's the reason, since you know better? Drink your coffee. Mm. What a bump of curiosity you have. Well, you are excruciating it. Mm, oh, David, you. listen, please tell me why you're taking a later train, you're please. You're going to be awfully disappointed. Well, any reason is better than no reason. It's almost half past eight and you're still here. Will you stop looking at the clock? I have a good 45 minutes before the train. It is not that I don't love having you here, darling. I just hope you know what you're doing. Well, I may as well tell you, for the sake of peace. For the sake of anything, tell me, tell me, tell me. It just so happens I have an appointment at 10.30 in the Grand Central Building, all right? That's where your train pulls in. Exactly. Oh. Now, there's no point in me taking an earlier train and going all the way to the office and then going all the way back to Grand Central Building all within an hour. No, no, no point at all. So, I'm taking a later train. Savvy? Well, for once you're using your sense. I must say it's unlike you. What, using my sense? Well, usually you rush off like a man, do things the complicated way. Like a man? Well, I apologize for my sex. Oh, you don't have to, darling. Well, what time are you leaving the house? I told you my train isn't until 9.15. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Claudia, are you nervous or something? (laughs) Why should I be nervous, Kevin? (laughs) It hurts me. (laughs) I had a feeling all morning that you wish I weren't here. Oh, nonsense. David, have you felt that? I certainly have. Well, don't be hurt, darling. I just want to be sure you're not loitering because you're because you're sick or anything. Good Lord. Do you always have to think of the depressing side of things? Uh, David, mm, I... Uh, what are you worrying about now? I'm not worrying. Mm, that's unusual. I, um... Well, I, I just wondered if you'd like to drive yourself to the station. What did you say? Well, I, I won't need the car today, so it's all yours. Well, say something. Sure, I'll drive myself to state. I don't mind, of course, but well, I thought that. Well, I thought you that. You thought perhaps... I liked to drive you? Well, I thought you did, but. Dope. Of course, I love driving you the train, but I. Uh... Well, I have a bunch of things to do, David, and since I'm going to have to start doing them later, I thought I'd just as well better start doing them sooner. So well, that's clear. You can drive yourself to the station if you like. If you don't, if you don't mind. I think I'll drive me to the Looney House. Well, it's almost 25 of 9, darling, so you better hurry. The Looney House is miles from here. It's strange. I thought I was in it. Now, listen, Looney. You almost through with your breakfast? No. I thought I'd have another cup of coffee. You mind? How about you? Oh, no. No, thanks. I've had enough. Um, help yourself, though. I still think you're trying to keep something from me. Oh, stop being so suspicious, David. Go on. Drink your coffee. I don't think I like feeling my wife is... Rushing me out of the house as, as if she had more important things Listen, to you do. You are imagining things. It's just that it's it's almost twenty to nine, and I I don't want you to drive at breakneck speed, will you? I mean, won't you? No, not if you don't want me to. Very sweet of you. What are you looking for? That pipe. I wonder where I left it. Oh, I think you left it in the living room last night. I'll, I'll get it. Oh, don't bother. I'll get it. No, no bother at all. Kevin. I can't remember where I left. Well, uh, I, I'm sure it's in the living room, darling. Now, stay where you are. I'll, I'll find it. I'm, I'm looking for it, David. Stay where you are, though. No hurry. Huh, that's what you think. Now, uh, let me see. What was that station? No, well, can't be that. That doesn't sound like anything at all. Try 88, maybe it's that. As I was saying, Betty... Oh, this is... Yes, George. Go on, I'm listening. Quiet, quiet, quiet. 
I was about to tell you about my most interesting visit with the police department yesterday afternoon. Oh, yes. I want to hear that. Yes, yes good. Well, I think everybody else... Uh, nobody, David. There's nobody here but me. I'm looking for very, your pipe, very darling. Very interesting experience. Uh, I, I think you must have I dropped it between the cushions or something, but I, I'll find it. Stay where you are. I wish I had a chance to go down to that police department with you, George. Tell me about it. Well, for one thing, do you realize, Betty, that the detectives on the New York police force can identify someone by a mere hair? By a mere what? By a mere part of a hair, Well, dear. what do you know? What do you know? Yes, sir. If they find a hair in the hands of a murder victim, they can tell the race, the sex, and even the age of the murder. Oh, just not safe to be a murderer these days, is it? <laughs> I should say it isn't. Uh, I'm still looking for your pipe, David. <laughs> Go on, tell me more. And have some more coffee. Oh, thank you, Don't dear. strain I yourself looking, oh, darling. Oh, heavens, David. I also learned oh, that the police department is divided up into... Well, so that's it. So that's what? You are a secret radio listener. Well, I just thought I'd listen while I was looking for your pipe. You just thought you'd look for my pipe while you were listening. Well, what's so terrible about it anyway? Mm, nothing, nothing so terrible about listening. Of course not. Why, millions of people do. It's just your subterfuge. My sub to what? You heard me. So that's why you've been trying to get me out of the house, huh? David, you're dreaming. That's all I you can You didn't say. want me to know that you were an addict. Like dope. Now listen, there's no need to call me names just because I happen to turn on the radio to listen to a program. Doesn't make me a dope all of a sudden. No, not a dope all of a sudden. Well, at least that's understood. So now stop bluffing. Admit it. Admit what? You want to listen to this? Go ahead. Admit it. This program. Breakfast with Betty and George? That's why you want me out of the house. All right, I admit it. There's nothing criminal about it, is there? No, no, not about the listening. Well. Here, I'll even turn it on for you. There you are. Now listen to your heart's content. Oh, George, I love policemen. Navy blue. Maybe it's their uniforms. Now, you don't have to be a martyr, David. We just, we just won't listen this morning. No, oh, go ahead, listen, or you'll never no, forgive me. No, I'll do without. I'd rather do without than be accused of being weak-minded. Now, who are these Betty and George, anyway? Well, well, they're married, just the way we are. What other way is there to be married? And they're having breakfast. Just the way we do. I suppose they deserve a medal for that, too, huh? Don't you understand, darling? They talk. They talk to each other while they're having breakfast. Oh, miraculous. Oh, you're impossible. Why are you turning it on? It's free country. You have a right to listen. I would very much like to tell you, Betty, and our listeners, what the police protect us from. If you care to listen, they... Well, don't you want to hear what the police protect us from, darling? Oh, I couldn't bear your being bored, David. I'm not. I'm leaving soon anyway. Now, tell me, how long has this been going on? Well, since I found out one morning that they go on the air right after you leave the house. And you listen to them every day? Yeah, almost. They have six cats. They're terribly nice people. Really, mm-hmm. they you are. You sound like great friends. Well, I feel like great friends. <laughs> Only they don't know me. It's just sort of a one-way thing. Well, frankly, it's gotten to be sort of a disease, disease. with me. Like pickles, Like you know. pickles? Yeah. Well, I mean, after I listened once, I'd just, just gone on listening Sometimes they even talk about interesting things. Well, that is something to look forward to. You're very superior this morning, Mr. Norton. Mm -hmm, Proud of it. But if you feel you're missing something, go ahead, turn it on. No, 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 I wouldn't put you through such an ordeal. Now, George, tell me more about the part of the police department that are sales. They're still on the same subject. I knew you wouldn't approve. Oh, well, I guess when all's said and done, I'm just a woman, you're only a man. Well, I'm going upstairs to find your pipe, darling. You women are all the same. You can't stand a little peace and quiet. Always have to have the radio going if there isn't anybody around to talk to. Yankee Doodle, Winter Town. Well, George, you must have had a pretty fascinating time with the boys in blue. Next time I'm going to visit the police department and you're going to stay home. Oh, oh, you'll disrupt them, so there's bound to be a crime wave in New York the next day. Oh, you're so flattering, George. Uh, well... We talk about now, dear. About that dog. The dog. Mm. Oh yes, that dog. Of so, course. Now, let's see. I, but it is Mr. I, Mr. Not. I only I turned it on because I thought you'd want to listen. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's the reason. Well, it is. Let me see. I have the information about the dog written down. Well, what about what dog? Well, I don't know what about what yeah, dog. You're the card. one who's this. I thought you didn't yeah. think it was worth. I have the card right here, dear. Let's. Oh, good. Well, if you're going to be snippy, I'll turn it off. Snippy. I'm just delighted to find I'm not the only one who's weak. The dog is a great dame. 
Great day. Oh, you know, one of those great big David, dogs. did you hear? Uh -huh. Gee, they're talking wonderful. about a great day. What do you think of that? No, I, I, I heard what they're talking oh, about. Oh, did you pipe down and oh, forgot? Uh, how would you like to have a great day, Betty, my love? Oh, oh, I'd adore one. They're so big and clumsy. Mm -hmm. but they they must have known Great Dane personally, cats. too, once. Mm -hmm. I know. Not our sick cats, dear. Our six cats. Oh, dogs no, love I think cats. Our six least... cats would murder well, love, love, anyway, six. the information for our listeners they is... Now, everybody get this. We have somebody who has written to us who is trying to place her Great Dane. Oh, that she can no longer sense. afford to keep him. Oh, I oh, hate to part with Isn't that an awful shame? He's an awful lot of meat, though. Not for a day. She's had to close up her home, and so she's looking for a good home for her Great Dane. You know, they often do this, day. Well, now, find homes in Spain. Mm, they do sound they like take pretty nice people. They are. They're lovely. It must be awfully hard on somebody to part with a dog. Yes, dear, mm. I guess it is. And Would particularly be. this kind of dog. From what our listener tells us, he's extra special. Oh, extra all special. dogs are. That's now, just what I would have said, David. If any of our like a Great Dane and can afford to keep him, personally, I think that it should be someone who lives in the country with ample space. Ample mm. space they're looking for. Well... Mm. They are pretty big dogs. You're telling me. Oh, I so say they are. Why, why bluff can... Day, hey, shut up, shut up. They get in touch with us. Oh, oh Mr. Knott. We are going Nott. to be pretty careful about who we're going to give this dame to, so writing a letter or uh, telephoning or wiring, you know, won't be enough. Oh, no. No, we're going to personally interview anyone who offers to take the dog. It's very nice of him, isn't We're going it? to interview it's them from really the care. point of view of the dog, aren't we, George? <laughs> of course <laughs> we are, my dear. Now, listen, yeah. at our apartment all day tomorrow... So, listeners, if you're interested in a Great Dane, drop in sometime tomorrow, won't you? But uh, remember, you better bring along your recommendations. <laughs> now, George. Yes, dear. I would like to tell you about what I did yesterday afternoon. Oh, me gosh, fellas. Girly talk coming up. Oh, 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 oh. Well, why'd you turn it off? Say, David, are we interested in a Great Dane? You mean us? Yeah, us. We, uh... We have a great day. That's just the point. We have only one. Mm -hmm. A one is almost too much. Well, I know, but he's such a lonesome Dane, darling. Mm -hmm. You're just listening to all those things they're saying about him. He'll, he'll just have to. He'll have to stay lonesome if you leave oh, it up to me. Poor Bluff. Well, yes, I guess you're right, darling. Mm -hmm. Once and for all, this isn't a rest home for melancholy Danes. Oh. Said, I guess you're right, as usual. So no more talk about it. Not another word. I wonder... I wonder if it's a male or a female Dane. You hear a lot of talk. In fact, you may even do a lot of talking about rising prices. But in a way, the wonder is that anything can still be bought at yesterday's low prices. Take Coca-Cola, for example. It was five cents in 1886. It's five cents today. And you get the same quality refreshment for your nickel. Hey, Joe. Uh, you still here, David? Mm-hmm. I thought you'd be on your way to the station well, by Claudia's now. Claudia's getting her coat. Say, uh, Joe, do you listen to any of those uh, breakfast programs? Well, my wife... Uh, well, she's just like your wife. Mm-hmm. I must say, though, that uh, these two people seem quite pleasant. Mm, what I heard of it. Mm, nice people, Betty and George. They must be. Trying to find a home for a great Dane. That's, uh... That's... Pretty much what I was thinking. And I think it's pretty much what Claudia was thinking, too. You know, it was a lucky thing that I, I happened to be listening to that part, wasn't it? Was it? Well, we'll see tomorrow. Oh, well, I'll miss my train. Say, I'll see you tomorrow, Joe. Sure thing, David. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.